Hello, hello. Um, chapter three today of A Dog Like Daisy by Kristen O'Donnell Tubb. Great book about a pit mix, Daisy, who is a shelter dog, and she is taken by a family, her new, her new pack, to be a, um, a service dog for a gentleman with PTSD. And today she goes through her first sort of test and, and training to see if she has what it takes to be a, a, a service dog. A pretty special characteristics to be a service dog. So uh, let's read and find out how things go for her. Instinct is your bones knowing. My new pack is tagged the Alberta family. Last night, they gave me a pillow to sleep on next to Mr. Victor. A pillow. Like I'm royalty or something. And I don't wish to sound spoiled, but the pillow was enjoyable. I forgive them for this silly luxury, though, because they also made me wear the leash while I slept. When I wake at the next sunrise, I stretch, squeal, smack my jaws. Anna winks at me. It worries me. I hope her eye is okay. Eye health is very important for survival. Mr. Victor and Micah and I ride in the glorious, glorious car again. I stick my head out the window and smell crisp burning leaves and bright yellow sunshine and deep, rich, diggable dirt. My fur tinkles like chimes in the wind. I decide that if I could pick one thing to do for the rest of my life, it would be to ride in a car and smell the world. We stop at a building that has no windows in the sense of a thousand dogs. Dreadful. Inside, the white floor is cold on my foot pads and makes my toenails click. They, the sound like raindrops on a metal dumpster roof. It's a sound full of concern. I worry at this new place. I'll be put in a cage again. Uh, I pull on the leash because if there's one thing worse than leashes, it's cages. But inside, the awkward one, tagged Alex, is there. He looks at Micah. Hey, bud. His eyes slide to Mr. Victor. It's more effective if you train Daisy alone. You know, having the two of you here confuses her. I purse my lips. Is that so? There is no doubt in my mind that Micah isn't the one I answer to. He hasn't even looked at me since yesterday's scowl, and his voice is undrinkable water, like foamy puddles on the beach. He's not mine, and I am not his. And if it weren't for the fact that he arrived in my pack before me, I'd question his usefulness. I'm the one training her, Mr. Victor says. Micah shrugs into a colorful thing that covers his ears. The thing has wires coming out of it that plug into the plastic box he holds and how dangerous it, how dangerous it is to block your hearing like that. I pulled toward him to warn him, but Mr. Victor is gripping the leash. Micah sulks into a corner and pushes buttons on the box with his thumbs. Okay, so, Alex the Awkward claps his hands. The sound make me jump because makes me jump because it echoes in this large empty room like a metal truck rattling over a pothole. Alex squints at me. I squint at him. Today we're going to evaluate Daisy here using the safer assessment, Alex said. He claps a clipboard and I imagine small bursts of orange sparking off it. This will let us see if she has the right temperament to be a service dog. Alex knots his fingers together. I should let you know, Victor, that there is no such thing as passing or failing a temperament test. Whew, I can't fail. However, only about 10% of dogs have the right temperament to become a service dog. And of those, only about 30% can actually pass the certification test. Humans. They put so much stock in their numbers. There's so much more to be said for instinct. Instinct is your bones knowing. So, Alex's forehead lumps. Odds are against your daisy here. That Alex is a real thorn. His voice is the same color green as when I eat too much grass and throw up. And today he smells like burps. Alex drags out a clear box of things. What we're looking for is a biddable dog. Easy to handle, eager to please, soft, mushy. I am neither soft nor mushy. Thank you. I vow to stop sleeping on pillows. People are getting the wrong impression. If this assessment shows those qualities, Alex continues, ignoring me, I'll recommend that she go forward with the training. And if she doesn't, 
Mr. Victor says, handing my leash over to Alex. Alex shrugs. His apathy for my future tastes like seaweed. We can't waste time on an untrainable dog, Victor, or money. Ten weeks, that's all we've got. He snaps my leash. I shrink. Untrainable. Sounds messy. Like fluff ripped from a cheap toy. I'll walk her through this initial assessment, but that's the only time someone other than you should handle Daisy, Alex says. At that, Micah's heart races. I can hear the squeak of his teeth clenching together, a sharp crack in the pavement. Did he want me to fail? Mr. Victor kneels next to me, rubs my neck. You hear that, Miss Daisy? He says, leaning toward my injured ear. Show him your best, girl. I promise, Mr. Victor. Aha! Alex says, yanking the leash backward. It surprises me and pulls me away from Mr. Victor. The number one rule with dogs, Victor! Always protect your face! The number one rule with humans, Alex. Always protect your pack. Alex walks me across the room. I don't like walking away from my pack. I can't protect them from across this big smelly place. I pull against the leash. Alex isn't my pack. I'm supposed to be with them. Alex clicks his tongue. She's not doing well with restraint. Her reaction to the leash isn't positive. Of course it's not. Shall I retrieve a leash for you, fella? The shadows on Mr. Victor's face darken. They are green on the edges, showing worry. Oh, no. I try to relax. I huff. Sorry, I wanted to put you on a leash, Alex. We walk a few laps around the room and stop. Alex nods. Not too bad, Daisy, once you got used to it. He starts petting me, then pulling at my skin and legs, each tug not unpleasant. I enjoy the massage until he gets to my injured ear. When he reaches for that, I stiffen and purse my lips. The hairs on my back rise. Hmm, Alex says. Her reaction to touch is overall fine, but she protects that ear, even though it's healed. No one touches that ear. No one. Mr. Victor's face shadows pull farther down. Poo. Micah's, on the other hand, lighten a tad. Double poo. I'm going to fail this test. They said I couldn't fail, but I will. I'll be the first. Mortifying. Will I go back to a cage? I don't like toy lightning. I have to try harder. Alex starts jogging with the leash. So I trot to keep up. He bobs and weaves, so I do too. He jumps, shouts, claps. The sounds he makes are like walking through spider webs, confusing and sticky. I watch him calmly trying to read clues as if I'm supposed to react to the silliness. Good, Daisy, Alex says. To Mr. Victor, he says. She's fine with new experiences like movement and sound. Mr. Victor shadows light in a bit. I smile. Micah shifts like he's uncomfortable. Can no one else hear his teeth grinding? He's going to break a tooth soon. Alex pulls out this huge pillowy thing that you look at it from the right angle might resemble a human arm. Alex pokes me with the thing. Do they think I cannot tell the difference between a fake arm and a real one? I'm very confused, but I let him poke me with it. it smells like it's poked 10,000 other dogs. Disgusting. Alex needs to invest in some cleaning solutions. She doesn't tend toward biting, which is excellent, Alex said. I can smell Mr. Victor's pride from across the room. A beefy, bloody pride. I've never been a fighter, so I'm happy that biting isn't something this pack needs. Excellent indeed. Alex the Awkward digs a bunch of stuff out of the clear box and tosses things around the room. He then walks me through the things. One of the things is a toy that quacks like a duck every few moments, spurting off bursts of purple, annoying but certainly avoidable. Another thing is a bacon treat. My mouth waters when we approach it, but I get the feeling I'm supposed to ignore it based on the tension in the leash. Nice job, Daisy, Alex says. He turns to Mr. Victor. Okay, last assessment. Let's bring her into the next room to meet the other dogs. Mr. Victor's heart speeds. His shadows darken again. Other dogs? Other people? Alex softens his hold on the leash. 
I can tell he likes and respects Mr. Victor. It's the only reason why Alex is tolerable, really. They're all veterans too, Colonel. You'll be fine. Colonel. I can tell right away by the taste of this word that this is an important tag. Colonel. It sounds like Colonel. Like airy popcorn. But it tastes like fine, meaty sausage. Like a tag that Mr. Victor worked very hard to earn. It is useful. He is useful. I resolve to call him Colonel instead of Mr. I am mortified that I didn't do so earlier. The Colonel and Micah and Alex and I cross the hallway into the new room. A group of six dogs and their handlers is gathered. Colonel Victor's shadows flush a worrisome gray deep the moment we're around other humans who aren't in our pack. His heart quickens. He begins to sweat. Strangers make him as nervous as they make me. Micah seems to sense this. He slides his hand into the colonel's. The colonel grips it hard, but Micah doesn't wince. Strong boy, good instincts. Alex walks me into the room and past each dog. Guten Tag, says a German shepherd mix when I trot by. Hello, a full breed golden retriever is next. She doesn't even sniff in my direction. She shakes her gorgeous, glossy mane. I decide to ignore her, too. Snob. Next is a Great Dane. Hello down there! In a loud mix. How do you do? And then a standard poodle. Bonjour. Typical. Finally, a wire, wiry-haired mutt who smells like beef leaps out at me. Hi, doll, watch this. If I wrap around you and you go over there, good, yes. Our leashes will get all tangled and the humans will have to dance like puppets. Puppets to unravel themselves. Watch. Ha, ha, ha. Dance, puppets. That's what you get for putting old Hawkeye on a leash. Sure enough. <coughs> Alex and the other human throw an arm here, a leg there, and are forced to twist and turn to balance themselves. Whoa, easy there, Hawkeye. Daisy, steady. Micah giggles at this shenanigans, the small dandelions of laughter. Hawkeye takes a long and somewhat evasive sniff of me, then gives me a sloppy, wet nudge with his nose. Thanks, doll. No. I always get a kick out of making a human to do that. Any other time, I think I'd enjoy these games. I'm not against fun. But I know today is important to Colonel Victor. I narrow my eyes at the mutt. It's Daisy, not doll, you pig. And if you just made me fail this test, I'll hunt you down and nip you in unpleasant places, doll. I nudge him back. He laughs. Call me. He jangles the tag around his neck that lists his human's telephone number. Back in the other room, Alex says, hmm, and... Mmm, while checking things on a piece of paper. His utterances sound like, well, there's no other way to put this. Bathroom noises. He slides his pen behind his ear, his mouth pursed to one side of his face. His expression reminds me of a hot dog. You're never quite sure what you're getting. Victor, Daisy here is what you'd call right on the line. You mean she passed? Colonel Victor lifts his chin at me. My chest puffs with pride. I enjoy a squirrel chasing thrill. Micah's heartbeat flares. Hope or disappointment? Hard to tell. Why are my instincts so murky with that one? No, there's no pass or fail, Alex says. Killjoy. She scored well in many areas, but not in others. At least not with regard to the temperament of a service dog. I'm torn. And because this training is so rigorous and, well, so expensive, when I'm torn, my recommendation is no. no. Alex continues. The money you've received only pays for 10 weeks of training. I worry that a dog like Daisy, the way, she, the way he says my name makes me picture a pile of writhing worms, can't be trained before the money runs out. You'd have to pay for the training past that. Well, that's impossible, the colonel cuts in. His face shadows are still murky and distrustful after being around other humans who aren't in our pack. He kneels beside me, grunting like rips of fabric. 
He lifts his tinted glasses to look me in the eyes. Can you do this, Miss Daisy? I'm still not whole hog certain I understand what this is. I know it means I must be useful, but I don't know how. A service dog isn't a pet, it seems, but I've already failed at being a pet once. I think so. Are you sure you don't want a full breed dog, Victor? Alex asked. They can be much easier to train, and the assistance is still available. I think it'd be a smarter use of the money. No, I want a rescue dog, Colonel Victor says, his gaze not leaving mine. His eyes are soft, his voice like sand. We live near sand. I know that sand can build things up or wear things down. I like the idea of a rescue. His pupils are wide, but his breathing is calm. Can you do this, Miss Daisy? He whispers again. I need his words trail off like a lost scent. I straighten my back. I lift my tail. Lift my chin. Colonel Victor stands with a groan. I'm sticking with Miss Daisy. Michael's thumb slams, Micah's thumb slams against his plastic toy, a small firecracker of anger exploding. Disappointment from the boy. A pet I am not. And now I've made a promise. I hope I can keep. All right, so I don't know about you, but I love this dog. I think she's amazing. I cannot wait to see what happens. Um, I think she's going to rise to the occasion. I'm sure she's going to have some challenges in the way, but I'm looking forward to it. Chapter four next. It's a human world, and I can't wait to see you. Hopefully you come back and uh, listen to chapter four. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you later. Have a wonderful day, and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.